Alright, hello YouTubers. So I'm a little hungry and I want a little midnight snack. And it is about midnight right now, so rightly so. And I figured instead of making it on the stove inside the house, I'll use my gasification wood stove. And this one is from Anti G Outdoor. I will put that link in the YouTube video description. So as you see, it is a wood gasifier. Kind of like the bush buddy. This is that ash pan. And this is the pot stand. So, got a bunch of twigs here. These guys are unfortunately a little bit wet. Not that wet, just damp wet. Actually, they didn't snap easily, so that's definitely going to be wet. Uh, some drier ones and some thicker pieces, which you know, they're kind of dry on the inside, so I'll feather stick them and I'll try to get it going with my smaller um, mish metal rod. So I'm going to put everything in, get it all ready, and turn the video back on. Alright, let's try to get this going. Turn off the headlamp. It is easier with a bigger rod, but I'm kind of testing with these smaller rods. Just not quite throwing the big chunk of metals I want in there. Okay, there we go. Got a little something going now. Let's uh, turn off the light so you guys can see it going. There you go. So the way that a wood gasification stove works is as you saw there was holes on the bottom and on the inside there are holes on the top. Wood stoves basically as you burn wood uh, you're turning the wood into carbon monoxide and of course you have some hydrocarbons in that as well. And the point of doing that is to be friendlier on a sustainable environment and you actually pollute less because you're just speeding up the process of breaking down the wood. And uh, the way that that is achieved is that you use the nice hot gas that is produced to recycle and burn again. So the inlets are on the bottom where, as you know, warm air rises and that will force the cold air to pull in from the inside inlet so that it can recirculate inside the double wall and then come out from the inlets on the inside. And in doing so, it will burn wood a lot more efficiently and hotter and therefore you will use a lot less wood than let's say my Vargo titanium hexagon stove that you guys know I have as well. But I love that stove because you can configure it in so many different ways. So what I'm going to do very soon here is I'm going to show you guys how it looks different. Now hang on, I'm just going to turn on the light here. I want to make sure I put on my pot stand right. Because you ain't going to touch that when it gets hot. Okay. So I'm just going to feed in a few more sticks here so it doesn't go out. So as you see, I can just feed in the sticks from the top part here. And I'll just burn away. And if you guys don't mind the shaking of the camera, I'm actually going to take it off the tripod here. And I can show you guys the actual gasification. And get out the smoke. You can kind of see 
see how it's, well, if I say swirling around, you're going to say, well, of course it's swirling around. But you can really see from those inlets, if you look right inside there. Oh, sorry, that doesn't work. It's a really nice hot fire in there. Very, very effective. And yep, damp wood in there, it will dry really, really quick. What is the disadvantage of using one of these guys? Well, the size. The Vargo Titanium folds down really nicely. Um, the other disadvantage is that, well, you can't really do a slow burn on this because it's so efficient. You can't really create a lot of coals on the bottom. So you can't really control it that well, uh, but again, it's a very, very good stove. So I'm going to turn it off now and I might turn, actually no, you know what, here, now you guys can see that better. But I got to put the camera down so I can keep feeding and make my midnight snack. See you guys later. So I'm kind of just letting the fire die down a bit, but as you see, it's it's pretty low in there. You can't let it burn out completely because then it kind of be hard to start your fire back up again. So just feed it a little bit just to keep it going while I. Simmer. Excuse me, Chloe. So here, I probably let it out a little bit too much. And so it might not start back up. <laughs> but a little bit of blowing on it and it will. Thank goodness. Don't let it go too low. Alright, so. Sorry for the white balance. It's going to be off because I'm using my flashlight. But. There's the egg and my noodle with some veggies in the bottom. And I'm just going to take the pot off now to show you guys the last little bit that's burning in there. I'm going to turn off the headlamp. And there you go. It's just slowly dying away. And that's actually still giving off quite a fair decent amount of heat actually. It's good enough to keep it simmering. It's just a little bit difficult to keep it simmering. But anyways, that's my wood stove from NTG Outdoor. The guy who sells it, his name is Jeff, and he gives excellent customer service. And I definitely recommend you buying the NTG stove from him closer look up at the stove inside here's your inlet holes on the inside and on the bottom the mesh wood goes in there at the plate to catch the ash and to seal it off so as your wood is in there and burning again it's going to be burning hot air needs to rise this is sealed off it's going to pull the cold air in through here to come up to feed the wood, to keep it nice and hot, to burn, and the gas that's also being created will also come out and burn from the inside out 
and lift it up so you have your chamber in there and it's recycling because remember when you're using your gas wood stove you're not just burning the wood you're also burning off the gas that's giving off and to convert it to carbon monoxide so it's very efficient it's much better than just an open pit there you have it